surgery of lung cancer with hypothermia. I asked my question in order to highlight the importance of combined treatment of non-small cell cellular lung cancer. Hippocrat said that if you cannot cure a disease, perform a surgery. If you cannot perform a surgery, use heat. If heat doesn't help, the patient is desperate. Uh, so I will tell you about the relation of this quotation to our realities. So lung cancer accounts for 17.8 percent and ranks eight in the structure of female diseases. And as for mortality rate, uh, it's even more important in these statistics. These numbers have been announced today. As for stage two and stage three, 16 percent. These patients are in our focus with regards to a combined treatment. I mean, radical invasion plus chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Yet another interesting slide with regards to the morphological confirmation of diagnosis, bronx, trachea, at least three-fourths of patients are subject to non-adjuvant therapy. The only radical method is surgical, only or performed with uh, chemo or radiotherapy. However, radiology methods cannot allow us to eliminate tumor completely. So we have to use other modes and we have to learn how to use different radio modifiers among which hypothermia is one of the most important ones. In our institute, we have been studying different modifiers, radio modifiers, for a long time, and here are our results on hypothermia. Advantages and disadvantages of pre-surgical and after-surgical Influence were discussed for a long time. What about chemotherapy? It allows to diminish initial cancer, which allows us to preserve organs. The second important aspect, we can determine sensibility of uh, a tumor which allows us to plan adequately our chemotherapy. Thus, we can improve the results of our treatment. We can even achieve a full morphological regression. Currently, one of the cornerstones is the three-mode treatment can improve survival rate more than twice in surgery and pre-surgical chemotherapy proved to be more efficient than neoadjuvant treatment. However, there are certain advantages and disadvantages of both methods. What about hypothermia? Currently, 
Hypothermia is studied quite well. First of all, it reduces replication and reparation of DNA and increases apoptosis. And it increases the permeability of uh, vessels and so on. In electromagnetic hypothermia, the blood circulation is low, which is very important. We use the number of factors, uh, methods, which leads to the death of a malignant cell. We have a lot of publications about hypothermia combined with radiation therapy. Some cells are resistant, but they become sensible to hypothermia, which allows us to improve the effect of radiotherapy. Chemotherapy combined with hypothermia thermia can be efficient. Cell permeability is improved and uh, uh, chemical substances are supplied to the tumor area, but uh, local hypothermia is administered uh, once in two, three days. It is related to the uh, heat shock uh, protein production. So, it le so on the average, we need 10, 8 um, treatment cycles. These are clinical data of hypothermia application, so survival rate. During one year, it was increased two times. The objective of our study was to evaluate efficiency of combined treatment with local hypothermia and radiation and chemical therapy. So what was the material of our study? Currently, we are treating a lot of patients. Only 23% of them finished their treatment and lived for two or three years after uh, the treatment. So it's a kind of dynamic observation. We have both men and women among our patients, uh, and uh, we have uh, different cancer types, uh, T4 and T3, and in every group, results are different. Uh, we separated results in order to get mo more objective data. These are adenocarcinoma, a large cell, and uh, planocellular cancer. So, distant radiation therapy and chemotherapy, these are dosages. and hypothermia twice a week from 45 to 60 minutes from the first to 33rd day of treatment. This is dosimetric planning, the radiation coverage area, and hypothermia is performed using the Celsius device manufactured in Germany at different conferences and congresses, you may hear a question about the effective temperature control in the focal point. I can say that we can control it quite well. It's about 42, 43 degrees. Hypothermia treatment schedule, so the uh, time of hypothermia 
uh, treatment is prolonged continuously. These are negative phenomena. Usually we had alopecia and other symptoms. However, we were prepared. We used premedication and respective therapy to uh, suppress this negative effect effects as for radiation reaction. We evaluated the symptoms of the initial tumor and the general symptoms of our patients, and we made a decision on a further combined treatment. All this is uh, rather traditional symptoms. Uh, only arrhythmia uh, confused us, but we use just simple anti-arrhythmic therapy. Efficiency of pre Full and partial regression was 85%. There were two cases of full regression. When the following morphological examination uh, didn't it's identify the tumors, so that was the regression of the fourth degree. But we know quite well that there is no direct dependence uh, on the efficiency of the neoadjuvant therapy and the survival rate. About intra and post op period, of course, we could expect certain difficulties or challenges in the intraoperational and post-op period, but we didn't uh, observe any uh, complications because we operated after the first reactions subsided, especially in the mediastinum, and uh, that told on the structures of the lung root. We also, of course, understood that there was uh, certain uh, difficulties with the stump of the lung root. A case study, uh, patient K, 33 years old, differentiated adenocarcinoma. Initially, central cancer of the upper lobe on the left hand side. There was a small positive dynamics, but when we achieved 60 uh, gray, then uh, with that dose of 60 gray, uh, there was an improvement. The central rack of the uh, central cancer of the third stage in uh, the main bronchus left main bronchus, uh, the lumen of the left bronchus increased very much and that was enough to uh, to cope with the respiratory incompetence. Uh, this is how the reactions uh, manifest themselves after six months and 19, uh, 12 months after treatment. Six months after, there is certain, a certain density in the cell structure of the mediastinum. And in a year's time, uh, uh, practically, the mediastinum returns to its initial condition. Uh, survival, uh, under a year, it is 85%. Of course, there will be many uh, reference groups, but we understand that for this category of patients, uh, this is a pretty high figure. So now, uh, the, uh, working in the research and development institution, and we 
are developing new medical technologies, and these technologies makes it possible to improve the two-year survival rate and uh, in conclusion, I would like to cite this, to quote uh, this phrase. We are a little bit behind our schedule, but you can ask, ask one or two questions. Very good question. I'll start with the second one. In combined therapy, at least I didn't want to stress the importance of this or that component of the combined treatment. Of course, we have the reference group that is not subject to hyperthermia. Uh, as for the surgery, lobectomy prevailed, but we had also pneumectomy and uh, 11 lobectomies and uh, 9 uh, pneumectomies. Could you tell us, please, what is the wavelength of the radiation that starts uh, hypothermia? What kind of electromagnetic pulse do you have there? What kind of radiation that does not harm the cells? It is not... Let me formulate it like that. This is a standard device. I would not misinform you now, so I'll find out. We have 25 institutions in Germany that were working at this problem. And uh, they have noted quite a lot of mortality in the case of pleural empyema. Now, there is practically no problem uh, with the inflammation of the bronchus stump. Let us then take a brief break for 15 to 20 minutes, and then we will reconvene here in this room. <laughs>